Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the first month of 2018. As always, we're bringing you the Nintendo Switch releases for the month of January. And these are the confirmed games. We will fill you in with some of the possible and potential titles uh, after the confirm, but we like to stay with things that are official, so that is what we're going to run through. And, you know, as expected, it's a pretty light month. We had some really deep months in November uh, with lots of retail releases, and then December with lots of downloadable releases, especially towards the end of the month with a bunch of surprise uh, drops. But January is taking things in a far lighter direction. And there are very few, if any, retail releases as of now. The only one that we can point out um, that has a confirmed date is Lost Sphere. And in America, that is a Square Enix store exclusive if you want that physical version. So, Gabe, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a slow one for Switch. To be expected, though, because we have a January Direct or presentation of some kind happening. I think we can almost say that with a degree of certainty. So I feel like some stuff gets announced and gets put out. And like you said, some of these other like Q1 titles that may or may not come out in January, uh, those will be probably going to drop. Yeah, yeah, we'll get more games than, than are in this video. But again, we do like to stick with the confirmed ones for this. Right. So first up on January the 4th, we have Grand Prix Rock and Racing for $7.99. Um, this is a very simplistic looking uh racing game it is from an isometric perspective um it has four player multiplayer but it looks like it is local with online leaderboards um, that is developed and published by enjoy up games now also on january 4th we have pick a picks deluxe again for 7.99 which is a picross type title um and you're making beautiful pictures and beautiful art such as a two dogs enjoying a palm tree um, two beautiful people dancing, a very swaggy bee. Uh, there is co-op, two to four player co-op, which is interesting. Um, and there are 300 puzzles, including, um, the capability for handheld touchscreen mode. Um, content that was previously available in pick -Pick's Color on 3DS and Wii U can be downloaded as DLC, and they will be releasing add-on packs regularly. So if you're into this kind of puzzle stuff, um... Picross, I really like. Pokemon Picross on 3DS is something I was a huge fan of. Um, so honestly, I may check this out. Yeah, I mean, especially out of the two on that date, I do feel like Pick a Picks Deluxe is the one that you're going to want to go with. That is a lot of puzzles. You said 300. That's a ton. A lot, a lot of puzzles. It, and uh, You can pre-purchase the game. You know, that's another thing. Yeah, pretty nice. And it is published by Lightwood Games. But Gabe, two is not the the only number of games you're getting on January 4th. You're also getting Stickbold, a Dodgeball Adventure Deluxe, which is the deluxe version of the previously released Stickbold game. It is uh, labeled as a hard-hitting, fast-paced dodgeball sports game set in a colorful and quirky 70s universe, up to six-player multiplayer, as well as cooperative story mode for two. Local multiplayer, one to six. Um, there are mini-games. There's 3v3, 2v2v2, 5v1... 18 characters developed by Game Swing, published by Rain Bros. I think this, Gabe, is our January 4th game. Yeah, I am going to hit you with all the dodgeballs, Zach. You cannot escape my strength. And uh, for $15.99, weird price, because usually it's $14.99, but this one doesn't cost you $16. Could be fun. Yes, and that price could come in handy uh, at the end of the year for our our, uh, <laughs> our $100 shopping spree. Yes. Um to, to note, it has very positive reviews on Steam, which is nice to see. It came out in 2016, but it's also $3.99 on Steam. So um, there is that. Now, moving to January 11th, we have four games. Uh, the first being Fury for $19.99, which is a previously released title. It is a boss-based battle title with very flashy interesting graphics i never got to play this the first time around it's published and developed by the game bakers uh they have cooked up what i think is a pretty cool game um, i remember hearing some some good things about this when it did initially release and i am interested in checking this one out i played some of it when it did come out and it is a difficult game um, some of those bosses can be extremely hard and tough to deal with but you know once you get more uh, familiar with the gameplay and everything you you figure it out they all have their own uh, strategies to defeating the bosses but you know do realize it is 
a boss run game for the most part, and there's not going to be a whole lot more. But the game was fun. Um, I'm sure you can get it cheaper now on other platforms, unfortunately. But the fact that it's coming to Switch for twenty bucks, pretty cool. Yes, it's ten dollars on Steam. Very positive reviews. Released July fifth, twenty sixteen. But I think that this boss based style um, will be awesome for on the go gaming. So I'm actually going to be buying this one hands down. I also am um, interested in buying Super Meat Boy on January 11th. I like the end is nigh quite a bit on Switch, and Meat Boy is a classic at this point, I would say. A classic indie from the from the era of Braid and Super Meat Boy. Um, they also are including a brand new race mode, which I think could be super fun. Yes, and you know, a good primer for Super Meat Boy Forever, if you are excited for that. That's obviously not coming in January, but the fact that the original is on such a platform that it fits so well, especially for the portable nature. You can do quick little levels and, you know, die a whole lot. Um, it's it's a fantastic game for Switch. Yes, for sure. Uh, we also have Energy Invasion coming on January 11th uh, for two ninety nine. This is basically Brick Breaker. So if that's your, your thing probably the cheapest game of the year on switch will there be anything cheaper than three dollars yeah, that's the there will, they, no, they are there will be you think there. there'll be a two dollar game yeah yeah i mean there was a couple or in 2017 there was like 199 games so i feel like oh, yeah okay. that, that happens but yeah i mean well, this color is, me corrected uh, uh, you're colored i will be colored soon but that's not till january 22nd also coming on the 11th is the escapist 2 which is another interesting one gabe i think that could be fun to play as you uh d- you know Make a prison, make the people happy or mad, and do so portably wherever. You could do it in prison. Well, I, I don't know if you can get a switch in prison. You've, <laughs> I've tried that at Alcatraz. It didn't work out so well. Um, but yes, The Escape is 2 is also releasing on the 11th. A game that people are excited for whenever we make like indie lists, or many lists. The Escape is gets mentioned. I never really remember it because it's not a like franchise that I'm familiar with. But it's going to be a perfect time to get into it. And like I said, I do know that a lot of you are excited for it. So happy it's finally being released. Uh, on Switch? Yeah, because it was announced like early on on Switch. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, I was going to say because this game did come out uh, yeah, earlier this yeah, year. Yeah, no, I'm talking about Switch. And- Okay, good. And it has very positive reviews on Steam. <laughs> yes. Um, with a whole bunch of updates and expansions, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle that uh, with the downloadable prowess that the Switch has displayed. That's the 11th. The 16th houses Inner Space for 1999, which is a very beautiful exploration flying game. Um, it looks to be a little bit more esoteric um, and kind of in the vein of like journey or something of, of that sort where it's more about the experience rather than the gameplay or rather than specific goals. Um, I think it looks kind of cool. It's developed by Polynet games published by Asper media. It is a solo adventure through a very serene, almost sea like seascape looking, um, set of planets. And, uh, it could be, if it runs well, it could, it could be an interesting one. Yeah. Just visually very pretty, very striking. Uh, art style here beautiful to look at almost looks like water paintings um so i might check this one out i I do like these pretty games two days later gabe i know one you will be checking out which is world to the west for 1999 i have to read you the straight copy from this game which says a teleportation mishap a broken contract a mysterious tree and a foolhardy expedition set the stage for our four heroes all right this is focused around exploration, action, environmental puzzles with four different characters who have different traits and abilities, published by Rain Games. And Gabe, this looks like something uh, that you would get into, especially because one of the characters reminds me of you. <laughs> what? That big muscular man. I, I am I am a, a, a big muscular man, as people have now seen, except that I'm not. But yeah, I mean, I can see how that kind of reminds you of me. Yeah. Um, but, um, how do you, how are you feeling about the art style on this one? Like, it's kind of like a little strange, I would say it, it, it's 3d, but there's not a lot of like texture, like, or yeah, detail. it's very basic. Yeah. Um, it, yes, it, it's got a almost storybook style to it uh, that I think will appeal to some people, but frankly, I don't really, the description of this game leads me down a very mysterious road, uh, almost as mysterious as the teleportation mishap, because I don't really understand what exactly is going on, but it is a four character puzzle action puzzler, which, you know, we'll, we'll see on January 19th. We have death Mark, which is a PlayStation Vita horror title. 
Um, it is from the Japanese company Experience. Uh, it looks very creepy. It's releasing on PS4 and Switch. Um, it's a... Uh, it has like that visual novel um, look to it, and you know it makes sense getting ported over from PlayStation Vita. I not really quite sure how I feel about this one, Gabe. You are a very brave boy. You will play the scary game. <laughs> uh, it takes place in a mysterious mansion where others branded with the death mark have come together to find a solution. Um, I really would love to see the Nonary Games um, series be put on Switch. They did originate on DS, um, 999, uh, Virtue's Last Reward, whatever the heck the, they're all called. I, yeah. That series to me is very interesting. Um, but you are getting Deathmark instead on the 19th. Um, Chroma Gun comes out on the 22nd. This is the colorful game I was referring to earlier, um, which is from Pixel Maniacs. And it is a test chamber based game with a gun that can fire different colors. So it's in the vein of Portal um, and a number of other titles, especially uh, on PC that came out in recent years that give you a bunch of test chambers, give you a special gun, and let you go to work. This one is 19.99, and uh, I think it's a good fit for Switch, even if it is you know, not as polished as something like you know, Portal itself. Yeah, I mean, and just like looking at it, it's very obviously inspired by Portal. And, you know, that's one of my favorite series ever. So, I'm going to definitely give this one a go. Yeah, and it's uh, very positive reviews on Steam. And a lot of good, good comments, including uh, a review from four players that says, GLaDOS is little brother. So, hey. Uh, there, There's a game that's a lot like this um, called Antichamber that I really, really liked on PC. I kind of wish that that was what was coming out. but I remember hey. you liking that game. Yeah. Chroma Gun it is instead. Lost Sphere hits on January 23rd for $50. This is the Square Enix RPG that I mentioned has a physical release in America, only available uh, exclusively through the Square Enix store. Um, there is a demo up on the eShop currently. It is a tried and true RPG. Um, Gabe, I believe that you said that between this and Octopath, you preferred Octopath, but I think that this one looks a little bit more traditional, so I'm sure it'll have appeal um, it's interesting. It's fifty dollars. I, I didn't, I didn't know that it was that that price point. Yeah, I, I feel like even Octopath is going to be that expensive. But this, I feel like, is the biggest game of the month. Well, I mean, it's not that big, but you know, bigger than all these other ones so far. So this is one I'm going to hundred a hundred percent going to be playing. I'm going to be checking it out. I do love more traditional JRPGs. I um, really dig the combat in this one. It's way like traditional and. Uh, visually, I think it looks very pretty as well. The price point, like you, it, it is something that's a little strange. I would have loved to see like twenty nine ninety nine or something like that, a more Setsuna level. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is one I'm going to be checking out for sure. Absolutely. Also on that date, one twenty three, we get Shu for nine ninety nine, hitting Nintendo Switch, uh, where you basically get to be a very peculiar bird. And your goal is to explore 21 lush levels, traversing across them uh, and trying desperately to survive. There are 10 recruitable characters, each with their own unique power. Um, it is brought to you by Coat Sync Software and a very pretty game. And continuing uh, this trend of interesting indie platformers hitting the Switch system. Yeah, this one is another one that kind of catches my eye. It just looks so pretty. So I'm going to be checking it out for sure. Uh, I do wonder, like, what the gameplay is going to uh, be like just because, you know, for platforming, it, I always have problems when, like, it's a little, like, too floaty and it's not as precise as I want it to be. But the premise is cool. It says, can you outrun the end of the world, Zach? That's the question. Oh, Gabe, you got to – that's that's an important, important skill to build, so I hope that you build this for us. Yes. Um, it, it has positive reviews on Steam. came out in 2016. Uh, it's 6 bucks on – on there, but it has a lot of really glowing comments, so it could be a cool one to check out. Uh, there are two games that we know are hitting in January without dates, um, or at least have been said to be hitting in January. One is Celeste from the creators of Towerfall, and that game looks absolutely awesome. It is more of an action platformer. Again, surprise, 
cool 2D platformers on Switch, but given the pedigree, super pumped for that game. And then also, Darkest Dungeon uh, has been heavily hinted at a January release. Their own Twitter said that they're targeting a mid-January release for the Switch version. Phenomenal indie title. Um, you are commanding a crazy group of dungeon divers and trying to keep them alive from pretty much every possible thing that could go wrong. It is a very... Uh, it's a very glass half full type game, I'd like to say. Bad things happen almost at every corner, and your goal is to basically just survive the bad stuff. It's not a game where it's like, hey, I'm going to do perfect. It's a game of like, tons of terrible things are going to happen. Can I last long enough uh, to outwit death? But I highly recommend it. It is a very deep and involved adventure. Um, and if you like RPGs, if you like um, dungeon crawlers, if you like really pretty art and intense morbid sad themes than than this one's for you yeah i mean i played it on pc and some of the stuff that happens to the characters where they just like, go depressed like it's pretty insane like i love that mm -hmm. game the the gameplay mechanic there um it, it's really really fun if you haven't played darkest dungeon wait till it's on switch because i feel like it's gonna fit in perfectly absolutely now i do want to go through um a number of games that are listed specifically on nintendo's coming soon page for q1 2018 there is no guarantee in any way, shape, or form that these hit in January, but I do want to mention them in case they do. Um, so we have Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition, which is the uh, sort of ultimate version of Kentucky Route Zero, which is a, uh, a narrative-driven adventure that released over a very long period of time. <laughs> very, very uh, long, yes. Maybe the longest episodic period of time. I don't know if we can say, I don't know for sure, but one of the longest episodic games um, in terms of time between releases. Um, Light Fingers, which is a cool-looking um, board game of sorts. I think this one has a lot of promise, um, but there's been no indication or update from them on Twitter of when it's hitting. Uh, there is a game listed called Next Up Hero, um, which is from Digital Continue, and you are basically uh, making new heroes and, and choosing new heroes every time uh, your hero dies, which I think is is kind of an interesting way. Um, pretty cool. Uh, there also is... I mentioned Celeste. Uh, Flipping Death is listed Q1, but I believe that is more towards March based on what I've heard from the developer. Um, Away, Journey to the Unexpected, is listed as a Q1 title. A feel-good FPS game that combines action, negotiation, and slightly roguish elements. Um, it's a first-person go through a dungeon, not an FPS in the traditional sense, it's more of like a killing weird monsters from a first person bro it's like almost more roguelike-ish than, than shooter, um, to be clear uh, there's also a whole bunch of other games that have been mentioned, Wargroove is listed as Q1 2018 on Nintendo's site, although I don't foresee that hitting in January whatsoever um, then we have things like Pocket Rumble, Steep who knows when these games are hitting um, but we have established the full list of guaranteed January games. And just to recap, Grand Prix Rock and Racing, Pick a Picks Deluxe, Stick Bull to Dodge Ball Adventure Deluxe, Fury, Super Meat Boy, Energy Invasion, The Escape is Two, Inner Space, World of the West, Deathmark, Chromagon, Lost Sphere, and Shu. And Darkest Dungeon and Celeste are really close to being on that list, but as they don't have dates, we don't want to put them there. Let us know what games you're going to be picking up in January in the comments down below. It's a light month, but there still seems to be some good stuff, and obviously that January Direct could house even more awesome announcements and maybe some surprise drops. Gabe, based on the games we know are coming, what are your top two picks? Alright, um, sadly, I think I'm going to just take the two best ones. Lost Sphere and Darkest Dungeon. Those are the two I want to play. If, uh, I'll let you hold on to Celeste, so those are going to be mine. Really, really heavy RPG month. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Fury because I'm very excited to finally play it. It was one I was interested in just didn't have a chance. And I think, again, that boss rush type style fits really well on Switch. Um, and then Celeste, obviously. Uh, I know it doesn't have a date, but if they are able to hit month one, um, I think that's probably going to be the coolest game given that it's brand new and given that Towerfall is one of the best. So hopefully they're able to uh, conjure magic twice and shoot that arrow straight to the top but let us know your picks in the comments down below thanks so much for watching we do this every month so if you are curious to hear what's coming out in february make sure to come back towards the end of january subscribe if you want to stay up to date to all the latest and greatest things that happen on switch in between these two videos which you should because this month is supposedly going to be really great given 
the rumored Nintendo event and all of the games that will be announced. So make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Fantastic day. Happy New Year. And until next time, for myself and Gabe, Switch Force out.